Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Right, let's have a look at the 2013 question on functions. Well, functions and a mix of trapezoidal rule, which comes under area. Okay, so part A, the diagram shows the graph of the function f of x equals to uh, 6x minus x squared in the domain naught is less than or equal to x less than or equal to r, x is a real number. And then part A asks you to find f of 0, f of 1, f of 2, f of 3, 4, 5 and 6. Hence, complete the table below. Okay, so I suppose to explain the chat and the question first, the domain, oh, that's a thick line, my apologies. Um, it, the domain 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 6 are the inputs. Okay, so we're feeding into this function all of these inputs that makes up our domain. Okay, um, so that's what that means. The outputs we call the range. So I can see the range in this one goes from um, plus nine, because that's its maximum value, down to probably, well, between the, between the domain of zero and six, my range is zero to nine. Okay, that's my outputs. Right, so my function is f of x being equal to 6x minus x squared. Okay, so the first one says f of 0. So x is being replaced by 0. So I would get 6 times 0 minus 0 squared is 6 zero is a 0 minus 0 squared is 0. Okay, f of 1, replace x with 1. 6 times 1 minus 1 squared, 6 ones are 6, minus 1 squared is 1 is 5. f of 2 is 6 times 2 minus 2 squared, 6 twos are 12, minus 4, so I'm getting 8. f of 3, 6 times 3 minus 3 squared, 6 threes are 18, minus 9, so I'm getting 9. f of 4, 6 times 4, minus 4 squared, 6 fours are 24, minus 16, I'm getting 8. f of 5, 6 fives, minus 5 squared, 6 fives are 30, 5 squared is 25, so I'm getting 5. f of 6, I'm getting 6 times 6, minus 6 squared, so that'll be zero. Okay, so I am getting zero, five, eight, nine, eight, five, zero. Okay, so that was one way of doing it. Now, let me give you some options in case you didn't see that way. Okay, so of course you could put into your calculator, um, where's my calculator? So you could hit mode setup and go to option three, which is the table and put into your calculator six red X. So alpha and the bracket to get at that red X behind it minus red X squared and hit equals to put it into the calculator. We're starting at zero. OK. Equals we're ending at six equals and of course we're going up in steps of one okay and you can see there that if you put that into your calculator your x column is zero one two three four five and six and your f of x column which is also your y always remember that y is f of x okay it's your y axis here y is zero five eight zero again so your calculator was a perfectly acceptable way to do it. Okay, um, so that's how we do it with functions. The other way, if you're, a, if you're a graphical person, is to read the values off the graph. Okay, so here at zero, this is when x is zero, you can see y is zero. When x is one, like we have here, you can see y is five. When x is 2, you can read off 
y was 8. OK, when x was 3, we can read off that y was 9. When x was 4, we can read off that x was again 8. When x was 5, y was 5. And then purple, when x was 6, y was again 0. OK, so you could read it off the graph. So three different ways there of doing that first part. And it, it's not that one way is better than the other. It's a case of which way does your brain see the question? Because all our brains are wired differently and we're all going to see different ways of doing it. So you have got to work with your brain, obviously. So it's whichever way you see. Part B, use the trapezoidal rule to estimate the area of the region enclosed between the curve and the x-axis in the given domain, okay? So the trapezoidal rule is used to find the area of a curved shape normally. So you can see this shape here doesn't fall under any of our shapes, such as our squares, our triangles, our circles, and so on and so forth, okay? And of course, it could even be more curvy, and you could be asked to find the area of that particular shape, okay? So anytime it's a curved shape, um, you could be asked to use the trapezoidal rule to estimate the area of it, okay? Um, and, and the word estimate, why did they do that? Well, well, a trapezoid, if I can go to my area and volume, because I'm not such a great drawer. I think there's one here in the thing, yeah. So trapezium has got two sides that are different lengths, and then of course joined together. OK, and the formula is A plus B, which is the length of these two sides over 2 multiplied by H. So basically, when you get A plus B over 2, you're getting the average of the two lengths of the side and then you multiply it by the, the, the width. OK, so that's the trapezium formula. So how does that tie into here? Well, what's happening here um, is they're taking each of these sections and they're approximating it to a trapezium, okay? So probably go up a bit like that and probably go across, okay? So you can see in this one, I've encountered an extra bit of area in my um, approximation of a, a trapezium. And then they take another section here um, and again, they might cut a piece off and um, they might miss a piece on this one. And it, it's basically they're trying to take the best shape that they can to form a trapezium and fit it to the thing. OK, so you can see all the different trapeziums being formed in this one. OK, so the ones at the end are the worst. So that's what's happened. Each of the sections is broken up and you approximate a trapezium um, from it. OK, and then you use what is called the trapezoidal rule. So because you can see when I drew in the different uh, trapeziums, they don't fit perfectly on a curve. That's why the question says estimate the area. So it will never be precise, but that's fine. OK, the one rule with the trapezoidal rule is that when you're cutting it into its, its trapeziums, that the width of each of the slices that you that you create are the same width. OK, and that distance is called H. OK, so you can see in R1, H is 1. OK, so the trapezium, the trapezoidal rule is part of area. OK, so in our log tables, we start on page 8, that's length and area. And then we go on to surface area and volume. But after that, then we have area approximations. There's two, there's the trapezoidal rule and the Simpsons rule. The Simpsons rule is no longer on the Leibniz course. So it's just the trapezoidal rule. Okay, so let's copy this. Okay, um, and let's just take a note of the diagram as well. So you can see the width is H, okay, in the diagram and our heights they're calling Ys. Okay, they're the heights of all of the different segments. Okay, so let's paste him in here for ourselves, if he'll paste for us. Okay, so that's our trapezoidal rule. Okay, and it looks an awful lot worse than it actually is. Um, let me show you what I mean by that. So the area 
That's Matt's language for approximately equal to. They're like little squiggles on an equals. Your H is your width. What's our width here? Well, we're going up in ones. So my H is one. So it's one over two bracket. Okay. Then the way I remember it is the first height and the last height. Okay, why have we ends in it? Well, that's because they don't know at any particular time how many slices you're going to put your, your shape into. Or in other words, if I had a shape like this, um, kind of a bigger one, I might decide, um, yeah, it makes sense to have a, a few more sections in it. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. OK, now I could have also broken it up into 14 sections, couldn't I? Um, as such, sorry, it can be hard to see the yellow, but I could have broken it up into into 14 sections and have the width uh, much narrower. And that would be more accurate. OK, that's the advantage of doing it. The disadvantage is that just that there's more computation. In other words, your sum is longer. OK, so. You, the, this formula works no matter how many slices you make um, and they call n your last slice, okay? Or your last height, okay? And this y n minus one then is just minus one back. So my n in this case would be like the sixth height over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, actually the seventh, because it's going from zero to six. And my n minus one would be this height here. OK, so my first height, my Y1 is here, OK, because I'm doing the area between the curve and the X axis. So it starts here and it ends here. So my first height is actually zero. My last height is also zero. And then I've twice all of the heights in between. Now, why is it twice of all the heights in between? Well, again, if, if you bear with me, I'm going to draw back in a, um, a, a, a trapezium. So there's the first one. OK, now the second one is here. OK, now, can you see that you see this side here, this, this Y1, as they would call it? Um, that side gets included twice. It gets included in the first trapezium and the second trapezium. OK, so that's why it's twice all of these heights in between. So we only count the outside one first once. We only count this one once. But in all the inner ones, they get counted twice for the trapezium to the left of the line and to the trapezium tw to the right of the line. So the way I remember it is h over 2, the first and the last, and twice everything in between. And then I don't get too bogged down by n's and n minus 1. So h over 2, the first height and the last height, and twice everything in between. OK, so you can obviously read your heights off the, the graph, OK, or you can read them from here because you've just written the heights out here. So it's twice the 5 plus the 8 plus the 9 plus the 8 plus the 5, OK? All of these heights that are here, it's twice them, OK? And then you can put that into a calculator if you want. Um, all in one go, or you can do it in two halves. So it's a half of um, 5 plus 8 plus 9 plus 8 plus 5, which is 35. So it's a half of 70. So it's 35 units squared. OK, so A is approximately equal to 35 um, units squared. And that's the trapezoidal rule. If you are interested in technology or engineering, but are not doing higher level maths, why not consider our level seven in electronic and computer engineering? This is a three-year programme that looks at the design and development of embedded electronic systems. 
These are the medical devices that keeps us healthy, the consumer devices that keeps us entertained, or the controlled systems that keeps us safe on the road. You can then progress onto the level 8 in electronics and self-driving technologies and from there to the masters. Check out the link below for more information.